Hi, Dan Tokar here at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Back at the 1982 Abana Conference, an Englishman, um, I believe his name was Stuart Hill, uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me if I get this wrong, uh, showed off a, an invention of his uh, that he called the Clayton Clamp after the village in England that he had his shop in. Uh, he had invented this, uh, this little clamp and uh, tried to get a bunch of manufacturers interested in marketing it. He has a, had a patent on it and nobody wanted to uh, uh, produce it. So he showed it off at the Abana conference and if I remember correctly, he said uh, he would let blacksmiths use it as long as they didn't put it into commercial um, uh, manufacture. Like you couldn't just start making these things and selling them, but if you used them in your work, he, he wasn't gonna go after you. That may be different now, I don't know. It's been a long time and I haven't seen any of them uh, around in a while. So anyway, what does a Clayton clamp look like? Well, here, I'll get this piece of cardboard up so you can actually see one. That is a Clayton clamp. It's a piece of square pipe. You say, how in the world is that a clamp? Well, I'll have to show you. But first, I'll give you some idea of the dimensions. The way to figure out what size Clayton clamp you need for the job. This size Clayton clamp, this is one inch square pipe, will work on half inch rods. Uh, so the basic rule of thumb is, is that you need, you need a Clayton clamp which is twice as wide as the rods you're going to join together. And the thickness, the length, of the, uh, the piece of pipe that you're cutting off has to be between one and a half and uh, two times the uh, diameter of the rod. So uh, this particular one is a one inch square piece of pipe that is seven eighths of an inch long. If it's too short it won't work, if it's too long it won't work. So. This is a two inch one and I have some one inch rods. Now I'm gonna to have to put the filter on the camera because I can't get uh, pictures of hot steel without the filter. So, all right, here we go. Okay, there is the anvil. So, I'm gonna take the small Clayton clamp and put it in the forge. You have to get it up to a nice bright red, dull orange. It shouldn't take that long. I've got a really big fire here, which I don't need, but I've been working on bigger things today. So it won't hurt anything. I will have dimensions in the description. So if anybody wants to make these things, they will have dimensions. The other thing which is good to have ready is a ladle full of water. Because a Clayton clamp, as much as anything, works by heat shrinking. What's going to happen is I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to put that little box on the diagonal between two rods at right angles. Almost hot enough. Now, I have used these cleaning clamps with a rosebud tip on an acetylene torch, and I have used things like vice grips and seat clamps to uh, set them. You'll see what I mean in a minute here. But it's a lot of fun to set them with a hammer. So you take the one rod at right angles, you put that on the diagonal. Gotta make sure I get this pointed just right. I'll fool around a little bit. Had to get that little piece of stuff out of the way. All right, now. See, 
You hear it kinking? That kinking sound is it gripping as it shrinks. Because as it shrinks, it grabs the rods. It's clenched around both sides of the rod and is now stuck together. You can drive those things apart with a hammer um, and it takes a little bit of force. So you could use this to assemble gates and railings. On things like furniture, I would probably want to make sure that there was a tack weld. But you see how it's got a nice ribbon effect? It's wrapped all the way around. I'm going to take the filter off the camera so you can get a better view of that. All right, here we go. Now see if you can see how that piece of square pipe has gripped both of those rods and when it cooled and shrank, it clinched together and gripped them. So you have this nice ribbon effect.